Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending our session. So we're going to talk about the uh, static sensitive information collection from Android applications. And this is outline for today. Uh, give us a quick introduction. Basically, we're kind of old friends of Black Hat. So I still remember in 2015, I uh, attended for the first time uh, Black Hat in Europe, Amsterdam. <laughs> Then in 2021, uh, due to the pandemic, we had to give our presentation online. And it's the first time we come back to Singapore after yeah. pandemic and to give this talk. So next, we're going to talk about several uh, you know, uh, data regulations about the um, user privacy protection and also what is the effect to the uh, mobile applications. Then uh, we, have, we conduct some, a series of studies to identify uh, security vulnerabilities from Android system that may lead to user private data leakage. And today we're going to give you some uh, introduction on that. Uh, to basically, we'll together look through a few vulnerabilities we identified. And also we we'll talk about the detection mechanisms we designed uh, in our research. Then. Uh, we're going to give a summary, basically talk about a few takeaways uh, from our work. And uh, at the last part, we're going to give a Q&A session. So about us, um, my name is Guangdong. Um, and I'm an associate professor from the uh, University of Queensland in Australia. And uh, next to me is Zhang Jing. So we have been working together for almost 10 years yeah. on Android security. He is now a senior, senior security and privacy expert with a lot of uh, certificates on privacy, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah from ByteDance. And also in our team, uh, Guan Shui. So unfortunately, he cannot join us today. So basically, uh, myself and Zhang Jing going to give this presentation. So you guys can find this is a combination be between academia and industry. So I, we find this is a very good uh, collaboration mode because we can expire each other. Uh, because oftentimes, you know, in academic research, we make a lot of assumptions. But actually, in reality, those assumptions may not be realistic. And also, in, in, uh, uh, in reality, we may need some uh, scalable uh, mechanisms. And basically, together, we can come up with more uh, inspiring ideas. So we are going to start with a very unpleasant statement that um, you know people talk about a lot about privacy so since the GDPR um, from 2016 2018, and uh, you know different countries in the world has uh, put in place uh, the data regulations, and as response to that, many manufacturers and online service providers which are so-called the data processors, also propose different um, mechanism to, for, for user privacy protection. A very typical example is nowadays, if we want to uh, upload our own application onto the market, we need to associate with a privacy policy document to describe what kind of data uh, we're going to collect and uh, what is the purpose to collect those data, and also the retention, right? Like how long we're going to uh, keep those data, and are we going to share those data to third party? So all those are kind of in documents, but if we look into the actual data uh, handling practice of those stakeholders, we find the actions are definitely insufficient. So that is why we say people talk a lot about uh, privacy, but actually on the action side, it's definitely inadequate. So I will start with the background. Um, basically, data regulation is increasingly important. So user data protection has gained a lot of uh, attention around the world. Uh, many countries have put in uh, place the legislation to regulate the collection, the use, sharing of user data. So the most uh, well-known example is the European Union uh, GDPR. So any infringement of the user privacy could result in large penalties. Uh, for example, the GDPR says if 
uh, the data processor failed to protect the data uh, in a secure way, a fine of up to um, 20 million euros or 4% of the firm's worldwide annual uh, revenue gonna be uh, the penalty. So since GDPR, um, most the countries, so actually 80% uh, percent of the countries in the world already start putting place the data regulation laws, or some of them are underway to do that, and only a small proportion of countries haven't uh, taken any action. So this actually has uh, greatly influenced the uh, Android, you know, the design, the mechanism, and uh, data protection. We know that a very uh, key, feature, a key feature of Android security is the permission system. So in Android, everything is a resource. If you make a phone call or send a short message, it's actually a resource. And also data is also a resource. So since the very beginning of Android, uh, the permission system was introduced to protect those resources. So if you want to make a phone call, if you want to access some particular data, uh, the application needs to uh, get the permission granted from the user. So uh, since Android 6, uh, and Google has made a lot of evolution on the permission system. So here I, we, we basically look into the document change, you know, every version uh, after the Android gave new upgrades, what kind of uh, privacy related, uh, uh, related policies are updated. So we look through the documentation and summarize that, uh, you know, according to different version, we list the evolution uh, in the permission system here. So I'm gonna quickly talk about them. Then later I will uh, introduce you a few examples which are highlighted here. So in Android 6, the runtime permissions uh, was introduced. So basically before Android 6, the permission granting is uh, uh, one or new, all or new. So if the application requests the permissions and uh, the user want to use that application, then the user need to grant all of them at the installation time. So since Android 6, the uh, selective granting was introduced. So basically at runtime, the user get a chance to either uh, grant or deny the uh, data request from the application. And also uh, access some hardware identifiers, for example, the MAC address of the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth uh, or need some location uh, permission. Then in Android 9, uh, uh, applications are restricted from access to log information. You know, in Android development, we use logcat. So sometimes the sensitive information may be uh, locked to, 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 the, uh, to the logs. So basically, such, uh, you know, restriction were prevent the application from access to sensitive data, maybe from another application or from the operating system itself. And also, uh, like phone number, uh, being restricted, being accessed by application, and uh, also the Wi-Fi location and connection information is restricted. In Android 10, some randomization was introduced, like if the application requests for MAC address, so actually the application will get all zero string. And also some device identifiers, for example, the identity of the uh, camera chips will be restricted being accessed by the application. And also uh, direct access to the config the Wi-Fi network also being restricted. And uh, uh, since Android 10, the access to the telephony, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi APIs will need the fine location permission. So previously, it was the uh, cost location permission. And also to access a location in background, we need a special permission since Android 10. And then in Android 11, um, further stricter um, restrictions were applied. For example, if application want to access the packages installed in Android device, because this implies some uh, sensitive information. So sometimes by looking, by, by examining the packages installed, 
uh, it's possible to track the user identity. And also, uh, the sandbox is further applied into the SD card. So previously, the SD card is treated as the so-called external storage. That means once data is put on the SD card, then every application get access to it. So uh, I want to look, look through them one by one, but just give you some idea that actually during the evolution of the permission system in Android, the restriction to the access of sensitive data is becoming stricter and stricter. So examples like what I mentioned, the runtime permissions, and also the uh, device unique identifier restriction, as I just mentioned. So this one is very special. Uh, in Android 10, a new permission is introduced. It's called uh, read privilege uh, form state. It's a bit small, the font is a bit small, so this permission. This permission can only be uh, granted to application with a signature level. That means they must have the same, uh, same signature as the OS, so it should be the embedded or system level application. And for the uh, normal application, they can only get some randomized uh, string if they access such device unique identifiers. And then in Android, I think 11 or 10, the uh, advertisement ID was introduced. And when it was introduced at that time, that's, that was no restriction on that. And since Android 12, the restriction was applied. So it's possible that a user can prohibit the application from obtaining the GAID, the, the advertisement ID, and also user has the uh, you know, the, the power, user is given the power to uh, do the restriction. So if user uh, delete the advertisement ID, uh, the application will only get all zero uh, strain if they uh, try to up acquire this uh, advertisement ID. So just now I already talked a lot about the, you know, evolution of the uh, per permission system when uh, Android tries to protect the sensitive data. Um, I want to mention some um, street permission in, in iOS. So basically, from iOS 14.5, if the application wants to uh, get the uh, IDFA, which is the iOS identifiers for advertisers, so it's equivalent to uh, GID in, in Android. So if the application tries to access this uh, advertisement ID, the user will be prompt at runtime and the user need to uh, explicitly authorize the application to, to, to get this ID. So when it was introduced, you know, a lot of disputes because you can find it affect the usability of a lot of application, right? Because nowadays application were embed uh, advertisement SDK libraries for the purpose of, um, you know, uh, making money from developing application. So it definitely harmed the usability. And at that time, many major, even major companies, they jumped out and saying, oh, this is not a, actually a good way. Although it is quite, quite secure because whenever you access that ID, uh, user get alerted. Um, but what we're gonna talk about today is like, should Android follow such a way to make uh, the, permission request in a transparent way to the, to the user. So now I'm gonna uh, transfer to Zhang Jing to give detailed introduction on our work. So he's gonna talk about several vulnerabilities we detect in our studies. Okay. Okay. Uh -oh. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Zhang Jing. Uh, let me uh, tell you some about uh, our findings. <clears throat> Firstly, let's move on to the question of permission. Uh, uh, now, Andrew has uh, runtime permission and uh, the indicators. Um, does that mean the user, uh, the user is fully aware of it? Uh, for example, uh, when we open uh, a link, uh, 
uh, someone shared uh, from the uh, uh, social applications. Um, if the, it's, it's safe without the occurrence of uh, zero, Chrome zero, uh, zero day, uh, our findings suggest that the answer is, uh, is no. Uh, you can guess what a permission can be passed through the application uh, to, to develop value in, in this sense and to get the central uh, information for, from the user. Location, uh, SMS or picture, or uh, clipboard, or more. Yeah. Let's see the answer. The first one is uh, um, audio and camera uh, permission. A web view can set a, a web, uh, web Chrome client uh, in the first line, like that. Uh, a web view can, uh, it, it, this uh, Web Chrome client is, uh, can handle the request for recording uh, in the open the web page. So in this function, uh, we can see uh, the on permission request function. APB can use the request to guarantee uh, the, grant the resources, uh, such as the uh, camera or uh, audio uh, resource. So, um, if so, in this uh, but if the application doesn't check the URL coming in uh, or promote a dialogue uh, when you open the page, the picture of your current camera can be taken away uh, instantly. Uh, despite the indicator, it's too late uh, for for the user to do anything, right? Uh, also, uh, the, the, the similar uh, logical exists in the possession of when handles the uh, request or location. If in this method, uh, this, me this method, on, on the, the location permission show promoted. Uh, if they, they, in, in this method, we, uh, it de directly called the uh, callback invoke uh, this method. The second uh, parameter is true. Uh, the user's location is uh, uh, directly uh, guided by the, got, got by the uh, application. It uh, didn't show, uh, uh, show, show any dialogue like, uh, like this. So it's very uh, dangerous, right? Uh, we search, uh, we did a simple search on uh, over these two methods uh, on GitHub uh, with some uh, uh, constraints. Uh, we got uh, about uh, 1,000 and uh, uh, 200 results called back. And uh, about half of them likely to have related problems. We sort the results uh, 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 by the stars. And uh, we uh, selected a uh, represent, representative uh, repo uh, with many stars. It's, uh, the name is uh, uh, React Value. Uh, it's uh, widely used as the part SDK. Uh, we can say, it has the related vulnerability. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, the, the location. Is, uh, the, 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 uh, the second parameter is, is uh, true. It didn't check uh, any URL or uh, promote uh, dialogue. Yeah. This one is handle the uh, audio and the camera permission. Uh, also the same. Uh, we also made the uh, ex uh, uh, example uh, to verify the, the this problem so using using this SDK. We can see this uh, uh, video. We compared the Cintron browser to the application in this video. Yeah. 
you can see uh, when we want to try to get the location, uh, the browser will pop up a dialog. But we use the, uh, the, uh, the application, uh, we, uh, we, uh, you using this SDK, uh, it, you can say you, you will get, get the uh, location info information directly without any uh, dialogue or ch checking the URL. Yeah. Uh, we, we have reported the, the, this uh, vulnerability to, uh, to the, 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 the React Native Web View. Uh, they have fin fixed uh, now. OK. Mm. Let's, uh, let's, on, uh, let's answer another question. Uh, whether is, uh, it is a storm in, in the uh, teacup to get the advertise ID with the user's consent? Uh, we say that uh, most users don't, don't, don't know the existence of ad IDs. And uh, it's very hard to set even, even for the domain experts uh, due to the uh, complex UIs. JID uh, is designed to be resetable, but the resetting is, uh, is not too, too much meaningful for me. Uh, as, it, as it is still there and can be used to track users during a particular period of time. Uh, for example, cross-tracking the users uh, into applications is still possible, uh, no, no matter uh, what, what the, uh, the ID uh, is, it is, yeah. Uh, and uh, I wanted to uh, tell you another o uh, ID is OERD. OERD is uh, on Android OEM device in China. Uh, Applications can get two uh, added ID uh, in, in uh, several uh, models of Android device, uh, GID and OID. Since uh, OID is not a feature in the USP, uh, so there are many ways to get uh, uh, to, to bypass the auditing the uh, uh, auditing on many Android devices to get the OID. Uh, yeah. So um, we have done the relevant research on eight top, uh, top selling latest device in the market. Um, you can see that uh, whether, whether it is for, for the setting of OID or GID, the setting path is most, uh, uh, most uh, mobile phones is very long. Uh, the, uh, you can see the, the first one is uh, uh, eight, eight steps to uh, go, go, go to the OID settings. It's very long. It's, some people uh, cannot find it, right? And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the name in, in the settings are, are not unified. You, you, you even cannot uh, use your Android, uh, Android's uh, search function to find it you, because the name is different. For, for, yeah. Uh, Moreover, we find that some Android uh, OEM device doesn't provide the user with the relevant control the interface, you can, you can say, yeah. Uh, Almost uh, six, yeah. Uh, what's more, what's more shocking is that even if there are setting interface, uh, the interface just the uh, decorations and could couldn't even change anything. Uh, as as a user, I feel cheated. Yeah. Uh, therefore. Uh, from, from the above uh, city the core, uh, ID ID is uh, to a larger extent, it has become a unique ID from the mobile phone first power on to the mobile phone factory reset. So, um, 
this is uh, the great damage to, to the uh, privacy uh, protection of the users. Yeah. OK. Uh, let's go on and continue. That's my part. Thanks, Zhang Jing. So basically, uh, Zhang Jing summarized some vulnerability. You know, one application I want to use web view, and this web view actually leads the application to a third domain. So previously in the browser, we have the same origin policy, but here, uh, such kind of isolation need to be done by the application itself. So if without proper uh, access control, that may be security issue. Um, the next part we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about is some detection. So things will identify those um, privacy leakage uh, problem in Android. Want to look into the detection? The uh, challenge here is, you know, there are too many surfaces um, for the for the private data to be leaked to a malicious application. So we're going to summarize six types of them, and together we look into the challenges uh, that we analyze such leakage. So the first one, we can use the uh, official uh, documented APIs to do this. So for example, if we want to get a IMEI or device ID, we can use the API provided by telephony manager. Uh, the challenge in, in such uh, interfaces is, is kind of vertical challenge. So just now I talk about the evolution of the permission system as per the uh, different versions of Android. So we sometimes we find the kind of regression problem. Uh, so although in document, it may say, oh, we're going to have this permission uh, for a particular API, but actually in the implementation, it's still possible for the application without that permission to get the sensitive data. So later, uh, if there is space, I'm going to talk a bit on that. So the second way uh, is through Java reflection. Uh, this gives uh, detection Lots of trouble because uh, Java reflection will use a string, uh, a string indicate the name of the API. So to detect this in a static analysis, we need to uh, we need to derive the value of that string. So this is super challenging for static analysis. And the third one, some application, you know, they they just embed their uh, data access as a native code. So they write it in a native way, and it is also very hard for static analyzer to detect such behavior. And also the fourth type, this type sometimes can even bypass the permission control because we know that when uh, application do a binder call, there is a client, there is a server. So usually uh, the API invocation is served by the client side. So at this path, there can be permission control there. However, if an application directly sent uh, the binder call, sign IPC call to the, to the server side, it's possible to bypass that. And also in the binder call, a lot of strings are involved for the intent purpose. It's also very hard to identify the exact value of that intent. So the five types is kind of for the customized uh, channel. We know that the OEM devices, if they, for example, have uh, special chips or special hardware equipment installed on their device, they may include some identifiers for that special chips, like a front camera ID or rear camera ID. So those IDs, those OEMs may define their own way to manage those IDs. They even provide their own APIs to access, for example, we. Uh, the CVE we listed here. So this manufacturer, they put a serial, serial number in a particular place. So let's have a talk about this place. Actually, it's on CQ. And then they provide a get serial number API for their applications. But this serial number introduced by them is put into the system property, which is kind of storage in a mobile device. And this property can be uh, like, list by just using a property name as a key, then you can get the value. Okay, so it's like the idea here is those uh, manufacturers, they introduce their own customized identifiers 
but they don't manage to protect them in a secure way. And also other ways like they may just simply uh, store those sensitive data, those identifiers in some accessible, publicly accessible uh, file system. And also uh, another vulnerability I want to mention here is like in the very beginning I mentioned, right, in particular version, uh, the restriction to access a phone number was introduced. But due to the backward compatibility, uh, sometimes such uh, API have to, have to be kept for the older applications to function. Okay, so uh, we report this to, to Android, but they believe that all oh, the applications nowadays in a Google Play market are already up to date. So it's not possible for them to use this API. However, they didn't take into consideration the third party market store, right? So we, we try to propose some detection based on the, uh, based on hooking the string constructor. So our idea is that whenever application want to access particular identifiers and these identifiers will be constructed into strings and then return to the application and send out. So our idea is why, we not, why not we just hook into the string constructor and at that place we see whether the constructed string is a sensitive information. So to test this idea, we hook the uh, parcels constructor. So the parcel is for the, for the IPC. And we also hook into the ARTs, the runtimes uh, string.h constructor. So I can show you a quick example here. Then we, I come back to talk about the pros and cons of our uh, detection mechanism. So we hook those constructors inside our uh, own device, and then you can see whenever an application tries to access the identi identifiers, for example, in this one, ICC ID, if they identify this one and we find, oh, this um, identifiers has been put into the string, then we give an alert. And of course, it's a quite low level detection so that not many applications can bypass this because eventually that identifiers to be sent out need to be constructed into a string first. But the problem is you can find right, there are too many strings to be constructed in a system. So this is gonna definitely affect the uh, runtime performance. Uh, so uh, application is like, we, maybe we don't deploy it in a user's device, we just put it in a testing environment for, for application analysis, then such kind of cost uh, should be acceptable. Okay, so just now I already show you this one. I jump to next. So this ICC ID just now uh, identified from, from the previous example actually has been restricted by Android 10. So in the very beginning I mentioned, right, the application who want to access the uh, device unique identifiers, they need to get the uh, get privilege phone state that permission, which only be granted to the uh, application in a signature and a system level. So we use this way and uh, we, we test uh, our detection mechanism uh, in some vulnerabilities we identified before and it works for, for all of them. So I want to quickly uh, discuss several takeaways uh, that we want to you, you think about after today's presentation. So the first one, the system level pro, uh, protection, uh, basically uh, Android has an evolution on the permission system and we need to do some regression testing to make sure all the, what, what was mentioned in documentation is actually enforced in the AOSP source code. And the second thing is about application level uh, protection. So here the idea is if the application uses WebView and involves a third party domain, then the application itself has the responsibility to uh, protect the permissions it already gets from the user. It cannot just by default you know, give all permissions it has to the, to the third party domain because you don't know when the user visits a 
uh, a URL, click a URL, uh, what kind of malicious code can be there. Uh, the third thing is kind of horizontal. Just now the different version is vertical, but this one is horizontal. So uh, the OEMs, the manufacturers, may introduce their own identifiers or other sensitive information. So all of those uh, should be protected and should align uh, to the AOSP's pros uh, the policy. And the last one, we also talk about several challenges like the advertisement ID. It is now kind of become a permanent or semi-permanent ID and how to protect them, how to restrict them from being accessed by malicious application becomes a new uh, challenge. Okay, so that is all um, about our talk on the sensitive information collection in Android. So we're happy to take a few questions. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Any question? So if no question, probably we move to lunch. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you.